everybody. Happy Wax on Wednesdays. I'm starting out today with a 12 by 12 cradle board. I've already taped it off with some painter's tape on the edges and I've put a couple coats of this RF encaustic gesso as a base coat down. And exciting today, going to add some really fun texture with this uh, wall texture spray. It's for drywall, adding texture to drywall. And I've sprayed it on here um, pretty liberally, uh, mostly on the bottom, a little bit at the top. I'm just sort of playing around with this. This is the first time that I've used this as a texture and it is water-based, so it's going to work. It's going to play well with the encaustic. My only concern initially with this spray was that it is a knockdown spray, meaning you can spray on the texture. If you're creating drywall texture, you can spray it on and then scrape some uh, back off when you're creating that um, that texture on your drywall. So I really let this dry. I let it dry uh, pretty much most of the day. The can I think says two hours uh, to dry and um, and it, I think it mentions a little bit longer before painting it. So I let this dry. I did this first thing in the morning, sprayed it on and didn't uh, come back to it until about five o'clock that evening. So um, here I'm adding just some white encaustic uh, paint over it and I'm going to leave the top part smooth. I'm going to fuse it smooth and I really want to keep that texture that I've created uh, on the bottom here. I'm going to go ahead and just do an abstract sort of landscape. I have a heat gun here and so I'm going to get all those air bubbles out and really fuse that top part flat and then have this beautiful uh, sort of contrasting texture on the bottom. And I'm going really lightly over that uh, texture that I've created with drywall spray. I went really lightly over that bottom because I wanted to keep and retain all of that great texture. And I kind of uh, just went and saturated the top part and covered the texture. It was a light coat anyway, so I just sort of covered it up with um, with the encaustic paint. But here I'm going in with very, very light brush strokes and going to build and continue to build on this with the creation method. I've got a uh, just a chip brush, old cheap chip brush, going at it, very dipping it. When I dip it in the wax, I let it set out for almost a minute before I really um, start brushing on to this piece. And that creates, helps create uh, a dry brush truck texture or create uh, an accretion method. And it builds and builds and builds. And what this dry brush or what this uh, drywall spray has done is sort of cut my time in half for building up some really exciting texture. It's already got my base on there and I'm just going ahead and continuing to build with this dry brush texture with the wax on top of that um, drywall texture. And this is of course a sped up video, but I'm fusing quite a bit in between these layers of dry brushing and I'm fusing it just to a glisten. Um, I'm not letting that texture go. So as soon as it comes to a shine, I relieve the heat and go ahead and add more layers of, of this dry brush texture on top of that um, drywall spray. And here I've got out the pan pastels in the landscape set and I'm just going to go ahead and start adding layers of color in. You can use whatever color medium you add, you use with encaustic, you can use on this piece. I do love using pastels with encaustic because you can gradually build those layers of color as you go. And you can also blend them right there on the piece with that makeup sponge and sort of um, blend everything, create it, make it lighter, make it darker. Uh, with the layers as you go and just fuse in between each layer. I add, I fuse with the heat gun just to a glisten so I, so I don't break up that color, but yet I'm incorporating that pastel into the wax. So I'm sure that it's embedded into the wax when I fuse it in, but I'm not um, fusing it so long that I'm going to break it up. And it takes a little bit of practice to get used to when you're fusing if you haven't worked with um, either the oil sticks or the pastels before and you're creating it on a fused flat surface. It takes a little while to get used to when your pigment is um, is fused into the wax. Um, it takes a little while to see it. Um, so that's why I always recommend going on a low setting on your heat gun 
or on your torch, the lowest setting that you have, the lowest flame that you have, um, and that way you can sort of see it as it happens um, without getting that breakup and that breakage and cracking of color. And if you would like to see more of these encaustic type of landscapes, abstract landscapes, then Encausticology 101 workshop is available 24 seven. And you can jump in and have fun with lifetime access uh, to the workshop with a whole library of encaustic techniques. And that is available um, right on the link underneath this video. And here you can see I'm fusing just to a glisten. And then I'm gonna add um, a little bit of grass in there and I'm gonna just continue to use the makeup sponge as a, as a tool and I'm just I've just kind of flipped it over using the tip of it there's special tools that you can uh, get and special applicators that you can get for this as well but I like just flipping it over and using the edge I like to use all parts of these little applicator wedges uh, you can use the corner and the edge and you know flip it over and use the other side and get all sorts of different um, shapes you'll be surprised at what you can um, all the mark making that you can do with just one little makeup wedge. And I just continue to build up this light layers of color fusing in between each layer. And I hope that you really had fun this week. I have posted a new blog. Um, it has always been on the Plays with Paper site and I put it over on the uh, SherryReplogal.com website. Started a new blog over there. So if you want to see the supplies I used this week, uh, check over on the SherryRuplogal.com website, link below uh, to the new blog post. Have fun, you guys. Happy Wax on Wednesdays.